Hey, I'm gonna give you a quick 10 minute recap of the type of life that God uses, which is a reflection on the life of John Lewis and Elijah the prophet. Every time, and here goes, 10 minutes, every time that God removes someone great from the earth, a mother, a father, a mentor, a grandparent who raised you, and every now and then a great national leader, then it forces us to stop and pause and to reflect upon our own lives. How are we living lives? And what can we do to take the life that we're living to the next level? John Lewis, without a doubt, uh, was a man that God used in a mighty way. At the age of 26 or 27, he made the decision that my life was gonna count for something. Maybe just a little bit before that, when he wanted to uh, be enrolled in school at Troy, he had contacted attorney Fred Gray and said, look, I want to go in there, let's sue them. His parents said, look, we have to live in this town, let's not sue them, all right? So that's very important. At an early age, there was something in John Lewis that said, I want my life to count for something more. I have experienced something here that is not right, and it may have been that piece right there of not being able to be admitted into Troy uh, University that set him on his path. And so when you, when, you, when you look at what happens in a man's life, the type of life that God uses, then he became committed. The next time he used attorney Fred Gray was to sue Greyhound to integrate the bus system. And the fruit of the labor of him integrating the bus system was that when he rode that Greyhound bus into the city, they pulled him off the bus and it beat him. And the police and all of those folks were not around at that time. But here's the point that I wanna give you from God's word, the type of person that God uses, and this is why it's so important. When God promotes you, he doesn't promote you to get ready, he promotes you because he is ready. And so, uh, one of the things that God showed me early on in developing leaders or leaders that lead leaders was that they had to have a mechanism that prepared them for leadership before the leadership opportunity came. And you can tell a man or a woman that is prepared to lead because they have a certain character about them. The type of people that God promotes are, are people that are found faithful. Um, David was found in the field being faithful. Joseph was found in the prison being faithful. Um, Paul, going the wrong way, was found being faithful faithful. Um, Elijah, when Eli Elisha, when Elijah called him, he was found being faithful. Now there are three verses of scriptures here, three, uh, three verses in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 through 21. When you look at the elevation of an Elijah, right? That uh, the first thing you see in verse 19, when Elijah, the major prophet finds Elijah, he finds him being faithful. And it says that when he found him, Elijah was plowing the field with 12 yoke of oxen. In other words, this was really huge, that this dude was found being faithful, not only being faithful, just think about it. You gotta look at that he's running a corporation. He doesn't have a donkey plowing, he doesn't have one ox, he has 12 yoke of oxen plowing. And, and so Elijah has the opportunity before he lays a mantle on him, to observe that person working, to observe that person being faithful. I don't know of anyone that God promoted that he did not have the opportunity to observe that person being faithful. There's never a need to promote anybody that is not found being faithful. Now, a lot of people want to develop the skills that they need for leadership in very public positions. And so one of the things, when I work with leaders for 12 years, Mountain Brook for, 12, for seven years working with leaders, I learned a lot from them. And here's, here's something that every leader that I saw had to have. They had to have cash, knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. They had to have the knowledge that they needed of the subject that they were gonna work on. They had to have a winning attitude. And then they had to have the skills that they needed to be successful. And then they had to have the habits that they needed for the character, right? So knowledge you can get in a classroom, a book. Attitude is something that has to be cultivated to get that little boy out of you, little girl out of you, to keep a winning attitude in a hellish situation. 
Skills is the tricky one because for leaders, for the opportunity to develop the skills that they need, they need to work up underneath a proven or established leader and have the opportunity to take a portion of what they're doing and lead to success under the tutelage of a proven or established leader. You can't get that out from a book or a video that is life on life. And then the next thing that they need is the habits, which are the character. They're able to do the same thing over and over and over again. When Elijah saw Elijah, he had a chance to see his work, his operation. And when he saw his operation, one, this man was given authority and had, and had control over a large workforce. Number two, when he looked at the fields that he, were, he was plowing, they were vast fields. You don't need 12 oxen, oxen to plow your backyard. This was a man that was efficient and effective in what he was doing when nobody was looking. He had the right character. The type of man, woman that God promotes, they have the knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits to function at the next level. In verse number 20, when he saw him being faithful, Elijah went up and laid his mantle on Elisha because he was ready. He didn't put the mantle on him to get ready, but because he was ready. Elijah's response to him putting on the mantle was, Wow, this is the moment. Please let me kiss my mom and dad goodbye, and then I will follow you. In other words, when that opportunity comes for your acceleration and promotion, you not only have to be ready, you have to be willing to move in a moment's notice. You don't have to get a second opinion when God is telling you, this is your time, this is your season. Walk under the power of the anointing that is on your life. You have to move immediately. The third thing that Elijah did when he made a commitment that he was going to be all in for God and rely upon God to keep him, he took away his golden parachute and set it to the side. What was his golden parachute? A lot of us say that we are all in with God, but we, we still got our job there as a safety net if this doesn't work out. We still have another alternative if God doesn't work. Elijah, he kills the 12 yoke of oxen that he had. He slaughtered them, boiled the meat, built a fire with the plow. In other words, I am done with this life. It's for this I am committed. I will pour my life on and into this right here. He was all in. He slaughtered the oxen, you all. The thing that had been his livelihood. This is his company. He literally dissolved his company like the rich young ruler. He sold all that he had to follow Christ. In other words, because don't forget, he wasn't just plowing in the field for fun. He was, he was running that company. It was his. He slaughtered his oxen. To follow God he was all in John Lewis was all in Elijah Cummings all in Martin King all in Malcolm X Medgar Evans they were all in and as we reflect on the on the transition of a John Lewis and you're beginning to reflect on your life what am I going to spend this second half of my life on what am I going to spend this third trimester of my life on I'm going to tell you this, it has to be something that you are all in. If you're not all in, then all you're doing is maintaining a life that you're never using. How in the world are you going to be fulfilled in life when you're maintaining a car that you're never going to drive? If you're maintaining an airplane that you are never going to fly? You know that there's got to be more to life than what you are living. You know that there is. The question is, are you willing to pay the cost and the price to live that life with God? Elijah did it. He said goodbye to his mother and father, not to go down into ministry, but to go up to say that God is calling me to the big leagues. I'm going to the next level. Verse 20, as I said, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 20. He boiled the flesh of all the oxen using the oxen equipment. So using the oxen equipment, and that means that he burned the mechanism, the wood, the plow, to cook the ox, to feed the people, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he rose, and he followed Elijah and became his servant. 
If you want to be the next Elijah coming, the next Martin King, it's going to cost you something. It's not enough that you are interested. It's not enough that you are passionate. It's not enough that you are ready. You have to be willing, and then you have to act upon the statement that I'm willing to go all the way with God. The type of person that God uses is all the way in. David, when he was anointed, he was found faithfully tending to the sheep. Joseph, when he received his promotion, he had been faithful in every house that he had been. When he was in Potiphar's house, when he was sold into slavery, when he was in prison, he was faithful. When the Pharaoh promoted him, he said, there will be none higher than you in all the land except for me. When God promotes you where he places you, there will be none higher than you except for God. Martin King said it like this, a man or a woman that has found nothing to live for, die for, has nothing to live for. Have you found that thing yet? Elijah Cummings did, and he died doing it. John Lewis did, he died while he was doing it. Joseph did, he died while he was doing it. Elijah did, he died while he was doing it. David did, he died while he was doing it. If the Lord should tarry, what will you die pouring your life into? If the Lord should come tomorrow, what will he find you doing? You all, I'm telling you, I've worked with guys that have had millions. I've worked with billionaires and all of them are restless. They are restless because they realize at some point that they are simply maintaining a life but they are not they are not progressing they are not pouring their lives out on something that will make a difference for a real change it is not a black thing a white thing a rich thing a poor thing i have seen it with everyone you know that you were created to be more than what you are and so if you are that one that is saying okay these great civil rights leaders are moving to the side. These great men and women of God are moving to the side. These great political leaders are moving to the side. The question is not if it's your opportunity to get all you can and can all you get, but the question is, are you the one or should the world continue to look for another? If God is calling you up, you don't need a second opinion. If God desires to raise you, you don't need an amen. If you're not ready, get ready. Use the opportunity that you have to sharpen the skills that you need for promotion so that when it comes, you'll be ready. And if you get to the end of the day and promotion has not come today, you've been increasing your knowledge, you've been allowing God to perfect your attitude, you develop, you've been developing the skills with the job or the opportunity to work that you have or volunteer, and you've been developing the right character. If you have been doing that at the end of the day, you can go to bed saying, today is not my day for elevation or promotion, but when it comes, I will be ready. Well, look, and once God promotes you, remember, he doesn't promote you to give you the opportunity to show what you can do. He promotes you to operate in it. The point is, once you have been approved, you have nothing to prove to anyone because God has placed his mantle on your shoulders. So be effective and progress. Don't maintain. He put you in a position to, pro to progress forward, to be productive. When you are productive in your life, it will be the most amazing life every day. But when you are not, you're simply maintaining a life that you're not using that is not enough for your soul to be satisfied well look that was the gist of it we love you god bless you remember not only prosper but progress in what you are doing with your life you must progress love you covenant community love you that's our recap hope it was 10 minutes god bless you take care bye